This is this is this is the the climax of the Freight Train 100K. I got pneumonia because I'm stupid. I mean, I- All right, so we were able to sneak in one more ultra marathon for 2023. And once again, it was a barn burner. I got absolutely destroyed like I always do. And I was, you know, I actually, I learned a very, very valuable lesson or it cemented a very, very valuable lesson in my ultra marathon training and my lead up to these races. And it's what it actually means to be prepared for an ultra marathon. I mean, does it mean that like I hit certain key workouts or I have a huge amount of training under my belt? Or does it just mean like a weird certain feeling like I'm ready to go? This really, (laughs) this, this race really, really, really freaking like pounded in my brain exactly what I need to do and exactly what I need to hit or the three things I need to hit to be fully prepared for an ultra marathon. Those three things are one, base, two, specificity, and three, mentality. So let's jump right into it and see what happened on the Freight Train 100K. The Freight Train 100K, it's a super flat course. I kind of YOLO'd this uh, race because, you know, after Grindstone, I mean, it took 32 hours for Grindstone for the Grindstone 100. I got absolutely destroyed. For half the race, I was just hiking because my feet were just covered in blisters. The balls of my feet were just freaking blistered up. So I was pretty much just walking that whole freaking or half of the race. I didn't get to run it the way I wanted. I trained really, really hard for that race and I was very specific in my training, getting a lot of elevation gain. But sometimes things don't work out and sometimes you get blisters completely over the feet of your feet and you just have to kind of grind it out and that's exactly what I did for the grindstone but that's not the race that I wanted to end the year on um I got a lot of I got a lot out of the grindstone I got a lot of I got to touch the fire I got to touch the craziness again which was an awesome mentality change that I was really looking for I just didn't think that I would find it in suffering for you know about 32 hours or 24 hours of, because I had the blisters on my feet for about like 20 hours, 24 hours. So, you know, I got to touch that, I got to touch that fire and I got a lot out of that, but that's not the race that I wanted. I wanted to actually run a race and actually push my body and my muscles and my training and my endurance in all capacities and not just the suffering portion of it. So I really, really started looking into getting into another ultra marathon before the end of this year and I didn't want to put my family through having to leave for like the whole weekend and all the prep work and everything for a hundred miler so I started looking for a local 100k I had a couple options out Um, some of the races closed a lot earlier than I thought just because of improper planning so I found this race that was about two and a half hours away from my house in Farmville Virginia and it was a super flat a super flat 100k and it was basically perfect I could you know I didn't have to take off time at work I didn't have to do anything crazy I just could jump into my van get a cheap hotel you know pass out for the night and then go and hit that run so it ended up being perfect it's just it's just the training was a little bit different than it should have been leading up to this um, because right after the grindstone I got sick And then I started going back into training and then I got sick again. And then, of course, the week before the 100K, uh, one of my daughters coughed directly into my face and I started getting sick leading up the last week of the race. I took basically the whole week before the race off just to try to let my body like knock out whatever was going on. But it really, I really, really started feeling sick the day I woke up for the 100K. So it is what it is. I mean, I wanted to get this race done. I I knew this was the last race for 2023. So I risked it and I ran the race anyways. 
no excuses on that front. It didn't bother me too much while I was racing. I'll get more into that later in later in the race. But let's jump right into it and go into the main topics of what it actually means for me to be prepared. And that's number one, base. So my base training was really, really good for this. I knew that I was going to be able to finish 100K. I knew I was probably would able to finish another 100 miler if I really wanted to. How I see base training or how I see my base training is how long can I suffer for? If everything goes out the window, if exactly what happens in grindstone, how long am I willing to grind it out? How long am I willing to actually push my body, even if it's at a much, much slower rate or pace, a much, much slower pace? Even if it's at a much, much slower pace, how long am I able to keep that slow pace and just use that base fitness and just push forward further and further until I get the actual mission done? So that's how I see my base training. Typically, I'll have to build that base training up with, I usually like three to four months of like building up the mileage throughout the training, just having a good base of amount of running under my belt before I run into the one of these races. So after the grindstone 100, after getting that stimulus of, you know, grinding out for 32 hours and then all the training that I did before the grindstone, I knew 100% base was checked off. I knew that even if it took 24 hours to finish 100K, 32 hours to finish 100K, I knew I was going to finish it. As long as there wasn't like really bad like injury that might have popped up or something crazy happened if it was just me grinding and just relying on my base training i knew 100 percent i was gonna finish this 100k i really wasn't able to peak out my training just because i got sick a bunch of times in between these two ultra marathons but you know i was at least maintaining the fitness that i gained from the grindstone 100 so i was good to go and this is also kind of where my training failed. So if we look into number two, specificity, this is where I really, really failed um, on the training or up on the up training for this 100K, for the freight train 100K. So <laughs> um, basically, I didn't do any back-to-back -back long runs and I wasn't able to develop my long run that aggressively so the longest run that i actually did was a really hard 20 mile run where i was actually doing a big workout in the middle of it so i was doing like i think it was like mile repeats and it was one of the fastest 20 mile workouts that i actually did so i was feeling really confident but it wasn't developing my long run. it wasn't developing my long run at all and what you really need to do is get your body back used to running on sore legs, working with like depleted systems. And that's why you do those back-to-back -back long runs. Or what you can do is just do the one long run a week, but then you develop it throughout the actual training. So you're kind of doing like 20 miles, then 24 miles, then 26 miles, and then you might hit a, a 50K, then you go back down, and then you go and hit, you know, a 50 miler, and then you go back down and recover, and then you hit your big peak race. So then your body is used to running those bigger volume weeks in those bigger, bigger, bigger long runs, like all in one go. Or what I like to do is kind of take it a little bit easier and not run as many races and just do like back-to-back -back long runs where it might be 20 miles on Saturday, 10 miles on Sunday, 24 miles on Saturday, and then, you know, 12 to 15 miles on Sunday. And then you're like 20, 20, and then you really peak. When I ran one of my fastest 100 milers, my peak training was a 50K and then I ran a half marathon, um, plus a little bit more, a uh, half, uh, yeah, a 50K. And then the next day I ran about 15 miles. So that really helped develop my long run. And I had a lot of confidence when I was running the actual ultra marathon at those ultra marathon distances, like anything over like 30 miles. I knew my body or I knew I could push my body. So what did my training actually lead up to? Like, what was I actually training for leading up to the Freight Train 100? What I was really training for was running a fast 20 miles. 
So that's as long as I went and I, my, all my workouts were below 20 miles and it was a lot of speed workouts. I did a lot of speed inside of those 20 miles, uh, of the long runs I developed and the, the 16 miler that I did and the other long runs that I did. So I was developing to run a faster and faster 20 miles and that's it. So you could really, really see that in this race because right after 20 miles, my body was like, Hey bro, we're done. We're freaking done. Why are you still running? You've only trained us to run a fast 20 miler. We've hit 20 miles. We've hit 25 miles or so. So we're just shutting off. And that's exactly, that's exactly what happened on the freight train 100K this year. So I was running. I was, you know, I was going. I was, I was coasting. I, was, I felt really, really good. I was not slipping out of zone two. I wasn't pushing really hard. The effort wasn't really hard. My heart rate was really good. I was eating about 200 to 300 calories. It was, it was like perfect weather. It was forecast, forecast weather, so there was no direct sunlight. It was about 50 degrees Fahrenheit, I think. I think it peaked out at like 60. So it was freaking awesome. I wasn't sweating a lot, getting a lot of nutrition. I actually backed down on my nutrition um, because I wasn't sweating as much. (coughs) So I had 200 to 300 calories going in. I had electrolytes and I had extra water. This ultra marathon is awesome because it's basically on like a awesome groomed trail. And you basically run out, you come back, and then you hit the start line, and then you go out, and then come back. So there's a lot of aid stations. I think there was an aid station almost every six to seven miles. So I was able to carry a lot less also. I only wore the naked belt with two bottles, and a lot of the times I only had like a bottle bottle and a half of liquid on me at one time, just because I could easily fill up at every single aid station. So... The conditions were set, the trail was set, you know, the nutrition was set, everything was set to have a spectacular race, which, you know, I can't say that this was a bad race. I I ran one of the fastest 100Ks I've ever done. I'm just being self-deprecating because I'm an asshole. But, (laughs) But, you know, everything was set, everything was perfect to run something awesome. Um, but I didn't develop, I wasn't specific enough in my training to run this style of ultra marathon. When I think of base, so kind of rewinding. So once again, base training is how long you're able to actually survive. That's, that's my take on it. Specificity is how long you're actually able to run or race a race or race an ultra marathon. So there's a big difference between surviving a hundred miler and running or racing a hundred miler. So pushing your body to the level at what you actually want to run or race an ultra marathon. That's what I think specificity actually helps with. So as I was saying for my base training for the Grindstone 100, a lot of it was for elevation, very specific for the Grindstone 100. So more on technical trails, getting a lot of elevation gain and basically trying to get about 200 feet of elevation gain for every mile that I ran. So it was a lot of up and down, a lot of like using the pools and using the trekking pools and being very specific for the grindstone 100. So that's what my body was developed and my base was developed to actually run. This freight train running and flat running is completely different. This race basically has less than a thousand feet of elevation gain over 63 miles. So, you know, it's a lot different style running. You're basically just locked in and you're just running in the same position over over and over and over and over and over and over and over again for, you know, It took me 11 hours, so I was just in that same position, and it hits your stabilizers, it hits your ligaments, it hits your muscles a lot differently than if you're slowing down and braking, and then when you're running downhill, your quads are engaged a lot more, you're hiking up, and your glutes are engaged, so the the pressure kind of changes a lot differently throughout your body than when you're actually running a flat race where everything is the same, and (laughs) the pounding is the same for hours and hours and hours, which you can run a faster time, you can have an average, uh, a better average time. But if your body's not ready for it, man, you're going to feel it. And I really felt it basically, 
the things that hurt the most were like my connectors, the ligaments and the tendons and everything, because they weren't ready for that style of like just grinding away for 11 hours straight. So specificity was my biggest killer on this 100K. I mean, I should have done a little bit more flat runs and 100%, and this was the biggest killer overall, is I should have developed my long run better. I should have done a lot more back-to-backs. I should have gotten like three to four back-to-back um, long runs because I didn't have a lot of time, so I couldn't properly develop the single long run. So I could have relied on back-to-back long runs to get my body back used to actually running those ultra marathon distances without putting too much stress on my body by running, you know, 50 Ks every freaking weekend leading up to this, leading up to this guy. I mean, you can do it. You can do it. A lot of people do. It's just me getting sick and, you know, durability reasons. I feel like the back to back at a shorter amount of time for development is the way to go, especially for myself. And that leads to the third thing, mentality. So, Mentality is a weird one that kind of wraps everything together. It wraps your base training together if you have a really good base training and you've been very uh, specific in your training. Your mentality leading into a race will probably be really, really good. I mean, you're going to be a lot more confident because you hit your workouts. You're going to be a lot more confident because you're, you know, unbreakable with your die hard grinding base training. Or, you know, you could be egotistical or a monster or you could be, you know, in space just like somewhere else thinking in your own plane of existence and you could be the most confident person ever. Confidence will get you a long, a long, long way in a lot of facets in your life. But also, life stress will also get in the way of that. You know, your mentality is tied to how you just generally feel. If you're stressed out, if you've been sick three freaking times in the span of two months, your mentality is going to take a little, little chip. You know, if things are going on in your family life, if your kids are going crazy, your wife is waking you up in the middle of the night with a pillow over your head, um, this never happened. It might have happened. But, you know, if that stuff is happening, your mentality is going to be a little checked. So I was kind of at like an 80% mentality. There was a lot of like, there was a lot of life stresses that were going on. You know, I have a, a newer job that I'm kind of settling into. There's a lot of things going on with that job and, you know, trying to get everything working on that. I started a new company that I'm running into a lot of roadblocks with, control chaos, you know, some CBD gummies. So I'm running into a a little bit of a lot of freaking roadblocks with the CBD company that I have, my little side hustle. And then, you know, the biggest thing that actually made me feel good was my family. So the girls are doing good. My wife is doing good. You know, the family's doing great. So it's able to counteract like all the life stresses. And I'm able to lean into what actually makes me happy, running, family, friends, all that stuff. So I was about at 80%. I, I honestly don't think anybody will be 100% mentality checked or like ready because there's always going to be life stresses. Once again, my base was good. Specificity, eh, not really. And then mentality was basically good. So I had two of three really leading into this freight train 100k and i'm am really really proud of the effort that i ran i ended up running it in 11 hours 9 minutes and 48 seconds with an average pace of like 10:45 i mean that's freaking awesome i mean that's one of the fastest average paces that i've ever had for an ultra marathon so even the flat ones that i've done so i'm very proud of that um I'm very proud of my, my mentality while running this race. There is <laughs> there is never a point when I was like, oh, fuck this. I don't want to do this anymore. Why do I even sign up for these things? You know, it was more mission driven. Like, hey, I'm moving. I'm running. I'm going forward. I even ran into a couple cramping issues, which I normally never do. Um, within the first 20 hours, my freaking forearms started cramping. I've never had my forearms cramp. And, you know, 
ah, uh, it might have been my own fucking fault because I'm stupid as fuck and I did a really hard push up workout. So I did this like really hard push up workout where I did like 200 push ups in a span of an hour because I'm stupid. Like four days before the ultra marathon, I thought I was fully recovered, but for some reason, just like both arms, the forearms started cramping. I also got a weird cramp in my, I also got a weird cramp in like the teardrop muscle in the front of the leg. Um, I was able to knock that out really quickly. I used to have that issue a lot when I was living in New Hampshire and really it's just salt intake. When I start getting that, I just stretch it out a little bit and then I'll take in a little bit more salt and it normally goes away. And I think that's more of like a stabilization or a stabilizer in my running form. So I'm going to have to figure out what's going on with that. But the salt really took it out. I took like four salt tabs, a thousand milligrams, a thousand mil, a thousand milligrams of salt. And I took it for two hours and it helped knock out that, that little, (laughs) and it helped. And that really helped knock out that cramping. But the forearms, the forearms would not go away. And I think that was just the muscle fatigue from that stupid freaking push-up workout that I did. So how did the race go? It actually went really well. You know, I was on a whim on how I kind of just YOLO'd this race. It went really well. You know, I, the lead up was good. You know, the sleep before the night was good. The food before, before the actual race was good. The carb loading was good. Everything was good except for the specificity of training in this race. So definitely for the future, I'm going to 100% make sure that I have those three things checked off before I start an ultra marathon. You know, the base is good, the specificity is good, and then the mentality is good. And I'll probably try not to get sick if I can, because now, and this is, this is, this is, this is the, the climax of the Freight Train 100K. I got pneumonia because I'm stupid. I freaking, I freaking got home. You know, I was, I, I was like legit just sick and coughing the day before the ultra marathon. Um, you know, I COVID tested and everything to make sure that I wasn't like contagious or anything. But basically, I ran the race. It didn't really affect me. I was coughing a little bit, but it didn't really affect me. I think the adrenaline and everything actually like pushed it back a little bit but once I was like actually beat up and destroyed and I got back home that's another thing I'm freaking stupid because I should have just got a hotel but right after the 100k I decided to drive home Um, I was mentally good I you know nothing was like crazy I wasn't all loopy or anything so I safely drove home but in those two and a half hours of driving home right after 100K, my body just locked up. I mean, my legs were just rocks. Everything just set in and it was like the worst possible freaking thing you could possibly do. I mean, you definitely don't want to sit in that position for two and a half hours, three hours, just sitting there right after 100K. I mean, it would probably be better to just walk than sit there and not move. Um, so that absolutely destroyed everything for recovery purposes. And then, (laughs) and then as I was like trying to recover, you know, the sickness set in and I started getting a worse and worse cough. My recovery was like way, way less. Usually for like hundred K's, I'm pretty good after a day and a half, you know, I could walk and move, but my body was just like so sore and swollen like it never has been before. Even after the Grindstone 100, I was moving pretty well after two days of recovery. But after this one, after two days, I just felt worse. I felt terrible. And my cough was getting worse and worse. I have asthma also, so I was wheezing a lot. And I went to, (laughs) I ended up going to the actual emergency room and they're like, oh buddy, you're not doing too well. And they they x-rayed my chest and I had, pneumonia. I had pneumonia in my right lung and then just a little tiny bit, like I guess it was starting my in my left lung. So I got put on antibiotics. I got put <laughs> I got put on steroids. And basically it's 100% my fault. I can't blame anybody else except for me because, you know, 
I was sick the week before a hundred K and then the day of, I was like pretty sick. And then I was like, fuck it. I'll do it. It's the last, it's the last fucking run of, uh, 2023. Who the fuck cares? And I just kind of yoloed it. And you know, it's sacrifice. If you want, (laughs) if you want to do big things, you want to have big goals. Sometimes you're going to sacrifice your health. I don't recommend that at all. I definitely would recommend anybody else to be like, yo, bro, just defer to next year or just get a DNS or a did not start or DNF. Like, don't risk your health. But I did. And I got pneumonia for it. And that's that's the price that I have to pay for being a little for being a little stupid and being a little bit too mission driven. But we got it done and I'm super proud of this freaking race. You know, once again, ended up with a finishing time of 11 hours, nine minutes and 51 seconds for the first 20 miles. I was basically running at an average of like an 820 pace, which is freaking awesome. And then even when I was like, my body started shutting down, I was floating around like 11 to 12 minute mile pace and putting in some pretty good work. So there was never a point where I felt like I started lacking or started feeling like, oh, I can't, I can't keep going or I just want to get off of this run or anything like that. So I'm really proud of my mentality. I'm really proud of the effort. And I'm really pr- proud of that like actual average pace of like, I think it was like an average pace of 1048 for 63 miles, <laughs> which, which completely surprised me. I, I felt like I was running a lot slower. I felt like I, I could have given more if I did my training a little bit better or, and I wasn't sick. But when I saw the results, I got ninth place overall and, you know, I got that good time. Hey, I'm pretty fucking proud of this race. After Grindstone, after this crazy year of DNFing thrushers and getting my ass beat from Grindstone 100 and then just YOLOing this 100K and being able to put out this effort, man, I'm proud. It, it, it was a good race. It was a fun time. All the all the aid station workers were awesome. All the race directors were awesome. Every all the volunteers were awesome. So thank you very much. I met quite a few uh, people that actually watched the channel. So if you said what's up, hey, thank you so much for saying what's up and thank you for watching. There was a a couple at the last aid station, and I had some like Nutella peanut butter sandwiches. Those things freaking absolutely saved me so thank you once again i think it was tony and way um but thank you once again for watching and i hope you guys get to grind get to the grindstone i know that you guys said that was your goal and anybody else that i you know was talking to or that watches the channel thank you so much for watching it it does really help and it does really help me you know get up and put these videos out and help people or try to not really help people because I don't want to be like a coach or anything like that, but let you guys take little tidbits of me getting my ass kicked from ultra marathons and (laughs) from training and everything like that. So it is, it is a big, it is a big thing when you guys do say what's up at these races. So once again, thank you so much. That was my experience with the Freight Train 100K. I know this video was kind of everywhere. It was kind of like a race breakdown with also like some mentality stuff in there. But hopefully, but hopefully you got the gist of what actually happened with the Freight Train 100K. Once again, always make sure that you're getting out there, chipping away, becoming an average savage. 2024 is going to be a motherfucker. So if you guys are waiting for 2024, start now. Start fucking today. You know, once I'm fucking fully recovered from this 100K, I'm going into a really big challenge that is not running related really, but it's kind of scary. And I'm not 100% sure if I can do it. And that's what's making me excited. So go out there and find something, find a goal or a mission that kind of scares you. So you can get that fire back into your stomach that you can touch that insanity. You can touch that craziness. And then you can take that craziness and surprise yourself that you actually did it. Or even if you fail, surprise yourself on how hard you actually work to try to get your goal done. And that mentality, that freaking fire 
it will transfer to all portions of your life. So again, do not fear fear. Run fucking towards it. Chip away. Become an average savage. Let's go fucking crush it today and into 2024. Let's go. Let's get it. Thank you.